Hello everyone, Steve here, back again with another video about baseball simulation games or sims. Today's topic is about fringe players and uh, whether you card fringe players in, in sims. And so with that, let's get started. So I put together this little table just to talk about, you know, how many players uh, should get cards in a sim. And I did a little comparison here. And the first one is Stratomatic. And I think historically, uh, the base set was 20 players. And then you could buy four extra players, I think two extra batters and two extra pitchers, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the way it was for quite a while. Uh, I really don't know, to be honest, how many players are either in a base set or, or with the extra players, but I suspect it's larger now. Uh, rosters are larger. Um, many more uh, players are used over the course of a year uh, now than, than, say, 40, 50 years ago when pitching staffs were smaller and and pitchers went longer and there were more complete games and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's Stratomatic. Uh, then there's Payoff Pitch, which is kind of uh, one of the extremes. When I wrote up this chart, I said almost everybody gets a card. Now, in reality, that's not true. Um, what you can see behind me here actually is all the cards that you get for the 1984 season. It's a lot of cards. The cards are uh, on nice paper, uh, so they're, they're very heavy card stock. They take up a lot of space, but you get a lot of players. So I just happened to pull out the Milwaukee Brewers here, and what you get is uh, 18 position players and 16 pitchers. Now, one of the things I look for is what is the least amount of uh, either innings pitched or at-bats for, for uh, pitchers and um, batters, respectively. And here you have Paul Hartzell, um, who had four games and 10 innings pitched. So he got a card. He had a 7.84 ERA. And then, I don't know if he was injured or what, but Paul Molitor um, had 46 at-bats and about evenly split versus left-hand pitchers and right-hand pitchers. So, um, again, quite a few cards for an individual team. Uh, one of the problems you can run into when you print a lot of cards for an individual team is like a guy like Joe Nolan here for uh, the 1984 Orioles. So he had 62 at-bats. Interestingly enough, they were all against right-handed pitchers, which him being a left-hand batter, that makes sense. So what do you do since, since uh, you know, batter cards and payoff pitch have splits, what do you do? And so what they did is basically give him all strikeouts on his card if he batted against a left-hand pitcher. Um, hard to say where that came from. It's also hard to say why this particular card doesn't have all 100 options here or 99 options. So I don't know what happens if you roll a 98. Um, maybe, maybe an expert on payoff pitch knows. But my only point is um, sometimes you can get some strange outcomes if you go too deep into the roster when making cards. Um, so back to the comparison, I'm gonna skip what I do for a minute. Um, Sports Illustrated Baseball. Uh, this uh, was a game that was uh, developed um, and, and marketed for uh, the 1970 season, the 1971 season, and the 1972 season. And in the 1971 season, um, they had 15 position players and 10 pitchers. And usually the pitchers were split by six starters and four relievers. And so this is an example of the Minnesota Twins uh, sheet, which each row is a, is a player. 
And you can see at the bottom actually is all 10 pitchers listed there. And one interesting feature of, of the Sports Illustrated game was that each pitcher was given his own um, batting card, if you will, or batting chart, which was customized to his uh, batting performance. Um, and then up top, you see the starting pitchers, and then in the middle, you see the relief pitchers. Now, it looks like there's more than 10 there, and there are up top, but that's because Sports Illustrated went so far with certain pitchers to give them a separate chart for starting pitching and a separate one for relief pitching. Uh, I've studied this game extensively over the last nine months or so. It's really not clear to me um, which pitcher, how they decided which pitchers dis, you know, needed two different charts. It's not clear to me that they had really good split data to base this on. And, and in most cases, the charts look pretty similar uh, when, when they appear in the top and the middle. But in any event, um, in 1971, there were 15 position players and uh, 10 pitchers. So um, then in 1972, um, for some reason, Sports Illustrated uh, dropped the number. So there's usually, um, I would say, around seven or so pitchers in in. 1972. In this particular case, you can see they've got five in the starting section and two in the relief section. Uh, so that is seven. Um, so a little short, I think, from what you really would need to do any kind of a reasonable replay. Uh, I will say as well, um, well, in this particular case, you don't see the um, you, you don't see the um, the case where you had a pitcher on top and a pitcher in the middle, they were either one or the other. But what I was going to say is the, the pitchers on the top are the starters, but they are also eligible to be relievers. Um, just, just for completeness here, um, this is what the batter's charts look like. And there are 15 even in, uh, actually, no, in 1972, uh, it looks like there are fewer. So there's one, two, three, four, and five or nine, and four or 13. So they even had fewer batters in 1972. So only about 20, 20 players in total. Um, the other thing, since we're here, is you can see that, that in Sports Illustrated, they had left-right splits for batters, but not, not for pitchers. So... Um, let's go back to the comparison here. Um, APA. So, full disclosure, I can barely even spell APA, so uh, take what I have here uh, with a grain of salt. But uh, as best I could tell, looking at rosters and so on, it looked like typically there were 12 to 13 position players uh, in an APA team and seven or eight pitchers. Uh, now, I've since asked the question on Facebook and got an answer that the base set was 20. So the 7 and 13 uh, seem to make sense. Um, and in fact, uh, I had a flea market find here a few months ago, and this is the St. Louis Cardinals, I believe maybe from 1976 or 75, uh, whoever knows how to read this this red 12 uh, on, on, on number 53 would, would know the answer. But I counted these up, and if, sure enough, there are 13 position players and seven pitchers in, on this team. So, again, uh, not a big variance from, from one sim to another, to be honest. And then um, there's a game that I've done a video on uh, from 1977, 76, 77, 78 seasons called Batter Up. And typically they had 24 players on a team and there would be either 14 or 15 um, position players and nine or 10 pitchers. 
and it varied from team to team um, what the breakdown was, but there were tw 24 in total. Um, in, in my case, what I do is uh, I try to standardize on 15 position players and 10 pitchers and have 25 total people. Um, most of my teams that I make are, uh, I would say, vintage uh, from the 70s, maybe the 80s. And so that kind of corresponds to a 25-man roster. Now, I have made cards for Status Pro, for Sports Illustrated, which we just talked about, for Batter Up that we just talked about, and for my own game that I, that I call Vintage Baseball. And we'll come back to that in a minute. So, um, you know, I would say some of the uh, serious uh, replay people, you know, want as many players carded as possible. And, and I'm sympathetic to that. If you're playing as played lineups and so on, um, you know, you're in theory going to get some, some better realism there. But I had an idea, um, and so I'm going to talk about that here. That's per the real purpose of this video. And so what I've done here, and I don't expect you to read this, but I've taken the baseball reference data for the 1986 Mets pitchers. And interestingly, they only had 15 different pitchers uh, that pitched that year. So if I were going to card this team uh, in any one of my sims, uh, I would use this data and pick the 10 pitchers that I was going to card. And what is typical, you see it kind of in red here, but sometimes, you know, you have to decide, you know, who's going to be the 10th pitcher. You know, is it going to be... Um, the guy with 31 games pitched, but fewer innings, or the guy with more innings, but only 14 games pitched. But you got to make the cutoff somewhere if you're going to limit yourself to 10. So I just did it in the order that it was listed in baseball reference, which looks like uh, games played or appearances was, was the distinguishment. And then what I did is I I separated the data between the top 10 pitchers and the remainders. And I've put together some summaries uh, at the bottom here. And you can see the top 10 pitchers had a 3.02 ERA. The team had a 3.11 ERA. The top 10 pitchers pitched about 95% of the innings or maybe slightly more. And then that left a little less than 5% for the rest. And you can see the other statistics here, but obviously, uh, except for strikeouts, the, uh, the fringe players, the fringe pitchers, uh, pitched a lot, of, a lot worse than the main ones, which is not unusual, um, but uh, their ERA was 5.11. And again, you can't see it probably very well, but if you look at the individual pitchers, um, you had a guy that pitched uh, as little Ed Lynch pitched a, uh, not even two full innings. Uh, somebody else, Terry Leach, pitched uh, just shy of seven innings and so on. And, and so, you know, it really wouldn't make sense, I don't think, to make individual cards for these. My idea, which I don't know if anybody has done, is that you could make a card um, that is the aggregate of the five players or however many fringe players there are, aggregate their stats together, put it into your formulas and produce a card called fringe pitchers and then do the same thing on the batter side and take all the, all the guys beyond the 15 batters you're going to card and you could um, turn around and put those into your formulas and create a fringe batters card. And then any time you needed to use somebody uh, in the replay that wasn't one of the main cards, you just would pop in the fringe card. And I think that would work. Uh, I welcome comments on this idea. Um, and uh, I'm curious if anybody else has ever th thought about that. So that was the main purpose of the video. I don't want to make it too long, but but I want to show you a couple examples of what I did in, in real life. So I have, um, I have a spreadsheet that makes status pro cards. 
And so here you have the 1979 Pirates. And what I did is I kind of stretched it a little bit. I have actually 11 Pirates uh, printed out on this template. And then uh, I just filled in the rest with some other cards that I wanted to see. So, so the entire sheet of uh, 16 is filled out. But there were 11 Pirates that I carded. And then in terms of position players, I actually carded 16 to fill in the, the template. Uh, so again, I kind of violated my rule of 15. And then the other thing I did uh, was I actually, for, for pitchers who uh, had a, a decent number of, of at-bats, which it looks like there's seven of them here. Uh, I don't know why Dave Parker's there again. But anyways, there's seven of them here that I customized individual pitcher hitting cards. And then um, for the rest, I used just generic hitting cards. So that's, that's what I did for Status Pro. For um, this batter up game that I mentioned, here's the 71 Orioles. So I have eight on this side and I have uh, seven on this side to make 15. And then I just filled in the extra blank with uh, Shohei Otani's uh, 20, 2022, just because I wanted to see what it looked like. So it was 15 batters. And then the pitchers, I have eight on this side and two here. So, you know, exactly 10. So um, that's really what I wanted to talk about. Again, comments are welcome. Uh, of course, you can always like and subscribe, but uh, I really just uh, want to prompt some discussion. So thanks for listening.